What's up, Power Maniacs? Power Stasis here. We are back in Call of Duty Black Ops 2 doing a little FFA on Plaza. This is usually one of the levels I absolutely hate because of the two uh, areas, like right up here on top of this one. People hang out up there with bouncing betties and they just camp. And so then everybody else comes to try and dig the campers out and then they get fracked. The only thing that makes Plaza worse than that is when everybody and their dog is running shotguns. And this map, I think we have eight people on here and out of them, only two of them were using SMGs. Everybody else was using shotguns, whether it was a Silence KSG, Silence Remington, normal Remington, and then I think we had two or three auto shotties. So, Makes things very frustrating for somebody like me because you, you basically have to completely change your play style. And that's one of the things that is going to allow you to do well or do poorly in FFA. And I guess pretty much any other game mode. Uh, FFA is a little bit different though than most other game modes because... And look at that, double shotguns right there. Spraying and praying, hip firing, ugh fucking hate these guys so how do you counter this how, how do you how do you bring it on well you've got to force these shotgun guys out into the open now right over here this little area Pl plaza has a lot of nooks and crannies but there are some areas that don't have spawn spots necessarily in them and if you stand close to a spawn spot most of the time nobody's going to spawn there so this little area right here is fairly solid it's going to force them, you know, they've only got one access point to my ass, which is this area here, which is kind of low traffic compared to everything else. And then everybody else has to come through that little area behind me. And so you've got a spawn spot in that building. You've got a spawn spot over by that door. Now you've got a spawn spot up in the uh, actual hallways up there. But as long as you hug this area and you play smart, then it kind of forces them to come out. And the shotgun guys will try and hold, you know, those little points that they can hide behind. But you can basically just backpedal and force them out. And most shotgun guys, you know, there, there's a few good ones. Uh, I'd like to think I'm fairly decent at it. But most, most bad shotgun guys are just going to keep charging right at you, shooting and hoping they get enough hit markers to kill you. But... You can just pull them right back, lead them around this corner, and then get them fragged, and it works out beautifully. And uh, that's just one of the things that I wanted to point out before we got into today's topic. So today's topic, we're going to be talking about software for YouTube. Uh, I'm going to be covering all of this this week where we discuss you know, what you basically need, what are the minimum requirements really to be successful. And a lot of people don't think about that. You know, a lot of people think, all right, well, my commentary's got to be good. I got to play a game that people are interested in. You know, I've got to do this. I got to do that. But most people don't always think about their equipment. And just like anything else, uh, equipment in YouTube is critically important. Now, when I say equipment, what do I mean? Well, today we're going to be talking about Fraps, DX Story, and Bandicam. Uh, Xplit's another option, and there's there's probably several dozen others. But Fraps, DX Story, and Bandicam are, in my opinion, the top three. I mean, I know there are YouTubers who use Xplit exclusively to do their recording. Personally, me and Xplit don't get along very well. Uh, it's just running the application can hamstring your computer pretty computer pretty nastily so i'm not a big fan of x but i use it uh, to live stream with but but that's about it well let's talk about fraps and its benefits and its drawbacks with fraps uh the nice thing about fraps is it's been around for a while it's a professional piece of software it has a lot of positive features and it, it, it's really good at recording uh you know it's it's stable uh the the developers do a pretty good job with it you're not gonna have to worry about bugs for the most part and every, it's gonna do what it's supposed to do the problem with Fraps is that it's old. Uh, the developers haven't really bothered, and I have no idea how that dude didn't die. Uh, the developers haven't really bothered with keeping up with current technology, and by that I mean codecs. So they're still using some of the older codecs, and what that means is you end up with these gigantic file sizes. You know, like a 10 minute clip in, uh, in Fraps can easily equal 30 gigs. And what that basically means is your hard drives have to work harder, which means you're going to slow down more because you've got to wait for the hard drive to write. And unless you have a very fast 10,000 RPM hard drive or a RAID setup, you're going to struggle. So that's something to keep in mind. Now we're going to talk about the piece of software now that I use, which is Bandicam. It's the one that I recommend. I like it. Um, it's a little bit newer. It's not quite as big of a company running it, so to speak. It's not quite as, I don't want to say professionally done, but it just feels like it's more of a mom and pop shop out of a basement type setup than necessarily, um, you know, a, a big 
corporate business. So there are occasionally some bugs, there are occasionally some issues. Uh, so it, it doesn't always, you know, sometimes it'll unhook and you'll lose your video and a few other things like that. But it does do what it's supposed to do, I'd say 95, 98% of the time. The nice thing about Bandicam over Fraps is the file size is microscopic. So you can record, you know, 30, 40 minutes worth of it and you won't even get to maybe a 20 minute size video in Fraps. You know, you're going to be looking at under 30 gigs, under 10 gigs, you know, those type of, those types of sizes because it uses the up to date codex, which means it's, it's, it's a nice piece of software. You know, you're not going to have to, your hard drive is not going to have to work as hard. So if you've got a low end machine, and you're having problems with the frame rate drops, Bandicam might be something you want to look into. Finally, we're going to talk about DX Story. This is a relatively new one done by, I think it's a Japanese company. I'm not entirely sure about that. I know they're primarily speaking some form of Asian symbol dialect, so somebody will know which it is. Um, it's a fairly good piece of software. It's got some very advanced features. One of the nice features about it is you can use two hard drives in artificial RAID format, which means when you're writing, instead of one hard drive writing it, two hard drives are writing it at the same time, doubles the speed. Um, however, you pretty much need to have a fast hard drive to make DX Story worth it. And for me personally, I had a lot of lag with it, so I chose not to use it. So personally, out of those three, I would recommend Bandicam. You'll have to try them out, see what works best for you, and kind of make up your own opinions. Anyways, that pretty much wraps up this video. Hopefully you guys liked it. Hopefully you guys find it helpful. If you do, please click the like button. Feel free to leave some comments in the comments section below. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next clip.